Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolFooter.com and this video is all about building clients for real estate photography. It's one of the most commonly asked questions that I get. You've worked on some skills, you've seen some of my videos, maybe gone through some of my books, and you still have a problem getting clients, you're just not getting work. So what I've done is this video is broken into three different sections depending on the level of experience that you have, where you are in your a real estate photography career. So I've got a bunch of notes down here and so I don't have a teleprompter so you'll see me looking down here at my iPad mini from time to time. Sorry about that. But the three sections I'm going to cover for your level of experience to try to cover everybody's questions is if you're just starting out, we'll start with that section. So if you're just now getting into real estate photography, even if you've done other types of photography, where do you get started getting clients? The second is after you're starting to grow, but you're just not getting enough clients, you need to then get a bit more of a nudge to start accelerating a little bit. And then the third one is if you're already getting well established, you've been doing this for a while, but you're still not getting enough work, what do you do? So those three sections I'll be covering, but first, before all those, I wanna lay some foundational principles that'll apply to everything. So the first thing is, is that you have to ask yourself a big question, and that's, do you prefer clients over gigs? And this, this is a big one that I can't stress enough, is that a lot of people wanna go out, no matter what the job is, doing any type of genre of photography, and they think, well, I just wanna get gigs. Now, uh, I wanna be able to just get some work, and that's true for a lot of things, like for instance, weddings. <laughs> People don't get married often enough that you would have repeat business. Same thing with family portraits. Usually that's a seasonal thing to some degree, senior portraits the same way. These are onesie twosie things. Now, you can get high volume in those genres of photography to keep you busy every year, but there's a different marketing effort. When it comes to real estate photography, clients over gigs is the key, is that what you want is your after repeat business. So uh, in, in the old days, we used to call this, in my engineering days, we used to call this feeding off the whale, is that we would go for real large clients, typically government contracts, extremely hard to get, but once you get them, then you can feed off of it for a lifetime. So that's what you're after here is for getting clients over gigs. It might take a little longer to do that, but once you do, then your marketing efforts really drop off. Now, the sustainability that is key, knowing who also is sustaining in the business. Now, down in the description for this video, I've got some links to other videos that I'm gonna to refer to, um, as well as some other things. Um, but the first video I wanna to refer to was just a few videos back, and it was when I talked about the target client marketing for real estate photography. And in there, um, I showed uh, that only about 13% of all realtors make it past five years. So when you're trying to target, when you're uh, trying to market to uh, a certain realtor or in your area or realtors in your area, it, you have to realize you're only going after the 13%. You have to be careful of that, otherwise you're just gonna get gigs you're not gonna get clients. They won't be around long enough. And when you're after gigs and just doing real estate photography and you're working with the 87% the, the, of realtors, the, the majority that never will last, you're gonna get all kinds of stuff in there. Stuff that they won't last for a reason. You're gonna get hagglers. You're gonna get people that uh, complain about prices or services. Uh, they might try to cheat you out of things. You might get uh, people that have low scruples. So what you're after is once again the real really good clients. And even though 13% may seem like a small number, trust me, it's high. So no matter where you are, that 13% is what you're after. And remember too, when you're going for clients over gigs doing this real estate photography, it's not just about realtors. You're after different types of clients also. So realtors are a large portion of that. But once you're established, you think about builders, designers, stagers, things that uh, with companies that are established established and they would want 
a photographer that they can always count on. So a lot of my work doesn't just come from realtors, although it's probably about 75% of it, but another quarter of that is from other companies, uh, new construction building companies, remodel companies, uh, companies that do design and staging. So they come back to me uh, every couple months or so and they need something and those are big paying gigs too. It's a different market than real estate. So anyways, once again, it's that concept of laying this foundation that you're after clients over gigs and you're going to try to target that 13%. If you haven't seen that video, I do encourage you to go and look down at the description for the video and take a look at that. It's on client target marketing. So the next thing before we get into those three sections, laying this foundation is to realize, well, how much are you going to have to spend to market to this 13%? So my marketing budget, I've mentioned this before in other videos when I've talked about getting clients, my marketing budget is about zero. There's really not that much cost. Real estate photography is different. It's very different in how you market. Every single uh, shoot that you go on, unlike a wedding or a portrait, something like that, which is seen just by a small group of people that may never hire you because they might not have to be married or whatever, um, so they wouldn't be looking for a photographer. Real estate photography is out in front and center in front of every realtor. So um, in the United States, we call it MLS, the Multiple Listing Service. Other countries have other names for it. But your listing photos are seen by not just the uh, seller representative agent that hired you, but also agents, realtors that are representing potential buyers. If they do have potential buyers lined up, you're almost guaranteed they're in that top 13% because they are established enough to have people lined up that trust them to use them as a representative for their buys. So that is a, a critical point to remember is that you get free marketing every time you shoot. And this is why it's so important that you just don't take shortcuts if you just got a simple condo or maybe a mobile home. I shoot mobile homes. I know you see a lot of stuff uh, on my Instagram and Facebook and I'm shooting these big places down in Pacific Palisades, Beverly Hills, along the coast, Malibu, whatnot. Um, but the stuff I don't share sometimes is the mobile homes that I'm shooting maybe in Oxnard and Port Wyneme. If you're familiar with California, you know what I'm talking about. Now, those clients still pay me the same as what I do for other gigs. It's just a simpler job, so obviously it's not as much time on site. By the way, on pricing, to cover that a little bit more too, uh, there's a link also in the description for the video on my real estate photography report. It's a free video online, covers some of this pricing, so you get an idea of what we're talking about and what, uh, what it means also for your area. So anyways, you get this MLS advantage and then also word of mouth because agents, because there's always selling agents and buying agents, uh, they're always working together, um, they both have a mutual benefit to share information so they're constantly networking. And that's different when you think about networking between other photographers. Another photographer in your area networking with, with that photographer may not benefit you if that person's gonna post uh, your clients. In real estate, it's different because they're not out to poach. They're out to uh, be able to find, hey, let me know of that listing before anybody else or whatever. So because of that type of networking and word of mouth, realtors will share that information. So besides the MLS advantage of having your work seen by all these agents, when someone needs a photographer, who are they going to ask? More than likely, it's going to be one of these agents that you've been shooting for. So word of mouth spreads very quickly. And it doesn't take then very long to start getting some clients. Once you get clients, the gigs will follow. I have some clients that hire me usually about a shoot every week, just about, the real big ones. And then there's some that hire me once a month. Well, after a while, and you get maybe 30, 40, 50 clients built up over a few years, you could about imagine how busy you could be. Even if you just get uh, 30 clients and uh, one you know, gig a month, that's easy. Well, it's not gonna be just one gig a month. You'll get multiple gigs every month from them. So anyways, that word of mouth is uh, very important. 
to remember, we're different. Real estate photography market's completely different than a lot of other genres of photography. And this is why, too, you just don't think about, well, I'm gonna do a bunch of cold calling. Oh, I'm gonna be doing uh, a big email blast. I'm gonna get to some of those things here in just a little bit, but right off the bat, spoiler alert, cold calling, I've never done it, don't recommend it, it's very intrusive, nobody likes it. So if you find success doing it, fantastic. If you disagree with me, that's fine, but I'll just tell you my recommendations and what's been successful for me and the people that I work with, I just just don't recommend it. So anyways, one more, or actually two more things here on building the foundation before we get into some of these other things is that <clears throat> when it comes to pricing, and this is one of the big fallbacks, kind of almost a cop-out in a way with a lot of real estate photographers, is that if they're not getting work, first thing they'll say is, well, I can't compete. There, there's these, I call them photo mills, where like Obeo and some of these, where it's like, they're charging so cheap, they're just 50 bucks or 100 bucks, and it's unsustainable. But the thing is, you might have heard this before from other photographers, uh, is that you don't compete with price. I, I'm more expensive than some of the other photographers in my area, but I'm busier. So you can be a McDonald's or you can be a good sit down restaurant. So which one are you gonna be? Now, you don't have to charge that much more to make a lot more money. You need to have a higher quality product. So you don't compete with the price, you compete with other things. Think about this, compete with quality. If you can provide a consistent quality product, the 13%, those viable agents will be drawn to you. Why? Because they've been established, they've already gone down the route of, hey, I can get a real cheap, oh, this is great, I'm gonna get a cheap uh, uh, shoot here out of this company called Obeo, or one of those other photo mills. And then after a couple rounds of that, they see how inconsistent it can be because those are unsustainable companies that just hire junior photographers that have no interest in the company because they have no skin in the game, they don't get paid enough, they're in and out, so uh, every blind dog can get a bone every now and then, but you're just not gonna get those consistent results. So a lot of the um, established agents know that. The other thing too, even if they could produce uh, even consistent results, it's typically with a lower quality of service. So when you're able to work with your clients one-on-one, -on -one, uh, sometimes they call this boutique photography, even though it's in real estate is that yes you're working one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, with an agent to make sure that things are handled and also most importantly is to be able to show your worth show your value be able to prove to everybody that you have a high quality product and a high quality of service and for goodness sakes don't waste your time with hagglers if somebody's coming after you and going well you know why are you charging 250 dollars for a basic shoot and i can go to so this this other big company and they only charge a hundred you just, just don't haggle. You can tell them the reasons, you can show it to them, but just don't haggle and just move on. Those are not gonna be the clients that you want for the long term. Remember, you're after clients, not gigs. Yes, you'll lose the gig and it can hurt when you're starting out and you wanna make money, but trust me, move on, go for the clients, don't waste your time with the hagglers. And once again, these viable clients know this, they have way too much money at stake in their commissions to start trusting, and for their future clients, to start trusting uh, in an inconsistent uh, vendor. So, um, once again, if you're better than a lot of these, uh, photo mills or better than your competition, then you're on the right track. But these are things that you have to make sure that when you compete in your area, no matter what you're doing to compete against, whether it's a photo mill or just another set of photographers in your area that are also independent contractors, possibly like yourself, you wanna have the better quality. So you have to show that you have that worth. So you have to get really, really good. You need to really practice. So if you're just starting out or if uh, things are down the road, you're still not getting clients, I'll get to that in just a little bit, is that you have to make sure that you're better than your competition. So you have to have better quality, but you also have to have better customer support. You have to show a lot of kindness. That goes a long ways. I've said this many times before. A lot of photographers get into real estate photography thinking that this will be easy because they don't have to work with bridezillas, screaming kids doing portraits, but you're, it's just a different set of people. You're still dealing with people and people that are under stress with a lot of money on the table. So a lot of kindness and patience, flexibility does go a long way. But one of the biggest things too, since the pandemic, you know, since COVID hit, is that most 
uh, realtors now are looking for turnkey providers because they need more. They need, uh, yeah, some virtual solutions, and those things could be virtual tours or video tours. Also, they're looking for drone websites, everything, because now they know, even though houses may move fairly quickly, they know that they have to up their game, right? They have to be able to, because inventory has been low. A lot of reasons behind that, and I won't necessarily get into that portion of it right now, but, and I've touched on this in, in recent videos, especially on the Real Estate Photography Report video. Once again, description, uh, check that out, link down there. But you have to be able to provide anyways, you have to be able to provide 360 virtual tours, you have to be able to provide video tours, websites, drone, and of course your photography. You don't have to do all that yourself, but if you don't have the resources available to you, then you might not be able to start competing or keep competing in your area. So as you know, I have a drone partner, Jonathan the Drone Guy in Los Angeles. And so I do all his photography, he does all my drone, and uh, we share video work, and we've got a video editor also. So we are able to then offload our work. We're able to concentrate on what we do best and then have this. So it's something to consider, topic for another time, but just bear in mind if you're gonna compete you do have to be a full service provider going forward, especially into 2021 and beyond. So now that I've laid that foundation that we've got, those are the basic principles, I wanna now start covering those three sections depending on where you are in your career. So let's say you're just starting out. Now, this can also apply, by the way, for very seasoned photographers, if you are, or if you're just a new photographer, but you're new to real estate photography. Now, you might think about jumping ahead to some of the other sections. I would encourage you to still watch this section. It does have some important points and something I'm sure that you can glean from it. Because the one thing is, starting out, is that every new business, no matter what it is, they don't make a profit the first year, there's a ramp up phase. So you can't expect to just all of a sudden start doing real estate photography and it's like, hey, I learned how to do flambient, I'm gonna go out and shoot 100 homes. It just doesn't happen. It's not a wise decision because you don't wanna all of a sudden go out there and not be prepared and then get a bad reputation. Great example, uh, so small restaurants. I have some friends that have, a couple different friends have different franchise restaurants. When they open up a new location, what's the first thing they do? Before they open to the public, they have at least one friends and family night. And that's where it's a dry run. So everybody uh, is working just like they normally would, all these new employees, but only the friends and family come and it's a free thing. So they're able to then judge how well the cooks are working, the, uh, the cash register, um, people cleaning up, everything that's involved. Well, the same thing is true for just about any business. And if you've been in engineering, you know this is the beta phase, where it's like you might just roll this out to one or two. So the thing is, you just don't open up the doors on the first day. You have to be prepared to take a loss. And so you might wanna think about if you're still working a day job, you might wanna keep it for a while and be prepared to start ramping this up slowly. But be prepared though, if you're working a day job and you're wanting to get real estate photography clients, they're gonna probably hire you during the week. There will be some weekend work, but there will be a lot of week work. So anyways, you have to though be ready for that. And that's the phase also when you're doing this initial ramp up, it's where you're also doing R&D. No matter what the business is, you're doing your research and development. In other words, and when it comes to real estate photography, you're learning not just what gear to have, um, but also how to shoot, what to shoot, how to process, and very importantly, how to get in and out quickly and be able to do this. So one of the things I always loved about uh, watching things like SEAL Team, one of my favorite shows on TV, uh, that or SWAT, they, 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 these people, these, uh, these uh, military, police, and whatnot, what in these organizations that are the top of the top, what they do is they practice, 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 practice. They do dry run, dry run, dry run, and then they're out there and they're boom. And sure enough, something will go wrong, but they were better prepared. So this is the time when you're first starting out to really prepare wherever you live, practice, 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 practice. Once you get that down, talk to some friends, see if you can practice, 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 practice. And then once you've done that, 
you start working on a little bit of marketing and reputation building and it's something that I talk about in my business techniques book which is the local lure and by the way I have a link to all the books in my uh, real estate photography series in the description for this video I usually include it but the business techniques book talks about specifically that local lure idea so what you do is you go after one client so this is your beta phase. You find one client and you just don't find any client. You walk around your neighborhood. Don't drive, just walk. There has to be some house, condo or something, some listing that's close enough by you that a realtor is representing. Get that person's uh, information. Uh, best to send them an email and offer them possibly a first time discount. Um, maybe then, uh, see if you can do something in your neighborhood. If you, you introduce yourself and you say, hi, my name is Nathan. Um, I noticed you're listening down the street. I'm a real estate photographer. Um, if you ever need to hire me, here's some of my work. I'd give you a discount in this neighborhood. You might not hear back. If you don't, wait a little while few days, if they don't respond from an email in a few days, try to find another one. What you're after is that first initial test client because what you want to do is you want to shoot, you want to get their feedback, you want to improve and then repeat. It's a cyclical process. You want to be able to do this with them. You want to be able to then shoot, feedback, improve, and all that. And you want to be able to cycle through that so you understand better your shortcomings and what client expectations are. Now, ideally, this would be a one of the 13%, but it doesn't have to be because this could be a throwaway client. It has to be your first client though. Preferably, it would be in the 13%, that top tier of realtors that have been doing this a long time. But at least it gets your foot in the door with working with a real realtor. Now, another local lure could be someone you know. You might know a realtor, or you might know somebody who knows a realtor, and that's another option, but it allows you, though, to have somebody who's local, it's a one-time thing, um, that you can then work with this person. Once you have that local lure, things will start to happen. I remember when my real estate business took off, it was after my first shoot, and it wasn't that, oh my gosh, look at what Nathan did. My first shoot, I look back on it now and I cringe, <laughs> but um, what happened was the, uh, the, uh, the buying agents that had seen my photos asked the selling agent who hired me to do the work, hey, who does your photos? Those are pretty good. And that's all it was. It wasn't like, look at that outstanding work. It's like, hey, those are pretty good. Who do you have? And that was just even just to know so they have a backup. So they saw what was pretty good work. It took me forever on my first shoot. Nowadays, of course, it goes lickety split. But the the thing was is that that first local lure then brought in more work. So the more connected that that realtor is, the more chances you have then at growing your business. So anyways, if you're just first starting out, that is your approach. Do not, I do not recommend if you're just starting out, do calling all these realtors, emailing all these realtors and trying to get everybody, you're going to start getting a reputation out there that you're just not ready, that you're not up to speed and that reputation will last. You want one realtor to start with and then see how that goes. Once you have that realtor, then it's like things will start picking up a little bit. And that's where we get into then the second phase of the career where things are starting to grow but you just aren't getting enough work. You now have to escalate and start getting some more gigs. Let's cover that next. So once you've started out getting a one realtor, two realtors, things are starting to move a little bit. If they're not at all and you tried one local lure, may maybe try another local agent. You want to be able to just start getting just a couple one at a time. Things will take off. Trust me, they will if you do this correctly. Now, once that starts happening and you're starting to get some repeat work, then there's a number of steps you can take to start escalating, to start accelerating your business, your, the number of calls that you're going to start getting to start shooting real estate. Now, if you're not getting repeat work at all, you've worked with a local lure, you've, uh, nothing ever happened, never heard back from the agent again, you try another one, same thing happens. If that's going on, then I'm going to cover some of that in the last section here but not right now. 
basically though, something is going wrong. And I'm gonna cover the things that could be going wrong. But let's say though, first, before getting to that in the third section, let's say that things are starting to grow. You're starting to get a little bit of repeat business, but you're just not getting enough. Well, if you're starting to get repeat business, people are calling you back, that means good news. They liked your work, they liked you, and they're hiring you. Now you just need to get more clients under your belt. So here's some things that you can do. First off, you wanna make sure that you're presenting yourself very well, and that means having a really good website and a good portfolio on that. Now, one of the things I did when I first started out with my building my portfolio is that when I had a chance to shoot some luxury, then I went after it. And I knew a couple friends that had some really nice houses, and I took some great shots of those, but everyone that I worked with, with my local lure, those were on my website. So I made sure first before going out to the masses that I had gotten enough work through those onesie twosie agents to then get a good portfolio and of course a good website. You take my website, you can take a look, it's nathancoolphoto.com. You've seen this probably in the biz tech book. I, uh, I use Zenfolio. Um, there's other websites out there, but you don't wanna have a website that looks like it was made in 1990. You want something very modern, very good looking. It shows that you are uh, in tune with the modern age of technology and real estate. So you wanna have a good portfolio, a good website. The next step on that that's completely free, and by the way, those websites don't cost much. Check out zenfolio.com, you see it's not that much. The next thing is to have a, uh, a really free uh, alternative <laughs> to advertisement, and I've mentioned this before, it's Google Business. So Google My Business. And with Google Business, uh, you put your listing out there and you put in your hours and all that and then your area that you work in and it's automatically targeted when people then are searching for a real estate photographer in a certain area. Now, obviously the ads will always show up at the top first, but a lot of times those ads are overlooked. People have gotten immune to it. Anybody who does searches enough, they know the first three or four that they see they're even marked as ad in a Google search that they're, they're just ads. So they're gonna scroll past that and see what shows up. So anyways, free way to do it is a Google My Business. So you go to Google Business, get yourself a free listing. Now, you can then the next step on top of that is to maybe consider some of those ad placements up at the top. Um, I never really had a lot of success with that. I did it initially. Um, I found I got actually more contacts through using Google My Business than Google Ads, but you never know, it might work for you if you're gonna go after ads. Because another alternative when you think about it is like, well, how about Facebook ads? Well, nah, I don't recommend that at all. I've had the worst luck. Other professional photographers I know have the worst luck. I've heard from some photographers when I've brought this up before, they'll leave comments on my YouTube channel. Oh, we get most of our work through Facebook. Well, that's just surprising to me because Facebook does a very poor job at targeting geography. They also, uh, are not necessarily a B2B, a business to business platform. So it's more of a, a social hour, right? And it's just a mixed bunch of company. So when you're on Google, you actually have real businesses searching for you for those services. So it's more targeted. If you think Facebook could help, yeah, maybe try it, but I, that's not my recommendation. Don't go there if you don't have to. Um, <clears throat> so, Another thing that used to be done to try to target and get new clients was the search for open houses. Those are gone since the pandemic, even if they come back. Don't do it. <clears throat> I really don't recommend it. It's, it's so intrusive to the realtor. Um, here they are at, at an open house on their weekend. They're trying to get new clients. That's why they have open houses. It's not just to sell the house, but they're busy enough doing their own thing. The last thing they want is just a whole bunch of ads because that's what you are. You're just like a banner ad that popped up if you show up to an open house and go, hey, how you doing? I like this. I'm a real estate photographer. Hey, if you ever need this, so intrusive, don't do that. Um, <clears throat> what you can do though, excuse me, is research more of the 13% in your area. Skip the open houses, but do some more research on that. You can go to uh, realtor.com, for instance, I believe even on Zillow, you can search for realtors in, in, your, in a certain area, and then you can search through, you can see on each one, how many listings they've had in the last year. You can see when they 
they started, things like that. So that gives you a pretty good idea then if they're gonna fall in that 13%. When you do, contact them individually. Don't necessarily have to do it by phone call. Email is always less intrusive. But one of the things you can do is you send a very personal email, something maybe even about a recent listing, telling them where you are, you're located, that you're close by to where they are, and offer them maybe a first time discount. Uh, maybe a first time discount just on add-on services. As you know, I've talked before, I do not like discounts. I never give discounts. When you're first starting out, it's maybe something to consider for first time clients, but just your first few, and it's usually just for the first shoot. Um, as I mentioned in the BizTech book, is, you know, don't fall for the thing like, hey, I've got five shoots, can you give me a discount? And then you show up, it's just gonna be one. And you've given this person a discount. There's all kinds of stuff like that. So don't give discounts, but you might wanna consider if you're reaching out to the 13%, give them a first time discount for something and give it a timeline by the end of the year, by the end of the month, something like that. Um, <clears throat> another one too that's very easy to do without even the discount or with it is just to offer to these specific clients that you hand selected, you hand picked, was that just let them know, hey, I know you've got a photographer, but if they're ever not available, I want to let you know I'm in the area and I'd be willing to fill in and be able to shoot something if they're not available for it, which does happen. I mean, I've got a, a photographer that I'm friends with down in Brentwood and I'm up in the Ventura County area. We overlap, we both do in LA County and Ventura County. And there's sometimes I'm too busy and it's closer to him, I just give him a call. It's like, hey, hey you wanna take this one? Um, so we do that type of stuff quite a bit. So something to consider, realtors know that does happen. So that's a very easy thing to do, but you hand selected this 13% and then you reach out to them individually. Lastly, after that, and this is really more of a point of once you're a little bit more established, but you're starting to really grow, if you have, let's say about half a dozen clients or more, you might wanna reach out to maybe one or two of them and mention that you'd be willing to do one of their guest speaker presentations. So most of these brokerage firms like uh, Century 21, Remax, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Keller Williams, they are always looking for guest speakers every month. Um, and it's a free thing, you're not gonna get paid for it, but you don't have to pay either. If somebody asks you to pay for it, run, that's just ridiculous. But um, the, this is free advertisement, and you don't just go in and say, hi, hello everybody, hire me, hire me, hire me. <laughs> you do a soft sell. You give them a topical uh, situation, so something that's very uh, relatable to them, a topic, for instance, on how to prepare for a real estate shoot. Um, and tell them about things of staging and cleaning, go through your checklist, things like that could really help. Uh, talk about things about rainy days and planning, whatever it is, you do some research, you give a presentation, they're gonna love it and then you're gonna make some contacts. So something to think about if uh, once you've got your clients established these things can help. But now we're gonna get into the tough part. Let's say you've been now shooting for a while, you've been trying to get clients, but it just isn't panning out. Well that's the last section here I want to cover. <music> Now comes the hard part. This is if at the point of your career where you've kind of gotten well in to at least your uh, first year where you've been taking a loss, you've been ramping up, you did the local lure, you, that grew, you started getting some more clients. But there's two possibilities primarily that could happen and I'm gonna cover both of them. The first thing is if you're getting some repeat work but you're just not getting enough, but the other case is if you're not really getting much, if any, repeat work, and of course you need to get more work. So let's cover the first one, which is the easiest. So if you're getting some repeat work, then it's just time to expand. Now expansion can be a lot of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you get more clients, it's that you do more work. One of the big things that took off in 2020 was uh, after the pandemic hit was virtual tours. Luckily I had been ramped up on that, that was fine. And I started then devising new ways to come out with special virtual tours, including one 
one simple thing and that was just changing the name of my property videos as an add-on to a video tour. The word tour took off. So there's things like that that you can do to expand your add-on uh, to other clients. So things that there will be more uh, appealing to them where they want to then have. So you can think about better uh, price structuring to start putting that in. So that's one way to do it. But the other thing is thinking about, of course, just getting more clients in general. So you can uh, maximize and optimize then every shoot with more add-ons. But if you're not even getting enough clients, but you're getting some repeat work, well, once again, if you're getting repeat work, somebody likes you. You're doing good work. You just need to contact more clients. So just like I talked about in the last section, same thing applies. Do Google My Business, maybe put some Google ads out there, hand select uh, stuff with these realtors within the top 13%, uh, contact them personally and see how that goes. If all else fails, yes, you might consider maybe an email blast and pay for that for your area, but that would be, in my opinion, a last resort. Once again, you're not really after gigs, you're after clients. Uh, email blasts tend to get gigs, onesie twosies, but they're not gonna necessarily get you clients. So that's where that falls in. Another thing on expansion too, you could be in a small town area. For instance, um, if you're in the Midwest and you're in a small town, population 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 people, not a lot around you, you might wanna think about how you can expand into other types of work. So if you're not getting enough realtor clients, think about expanding into other types of clients. So. Um, uh, construction, uh, car dealers, might need a virtual tour and photography done. Local businesses might also need that too. Photography of their businesses, virtual tours inside of it, offer to do uh, videos of them introducing their work, all kinds of stuff that you can help them on. Try to be a social media expert. And that's really just taking pictures they can post on Instagram. So it's things like that where you can be creative and think about how you can expand your offerings to other work. So even if you're in a very low populous area with a very very few realtors then to choose from. You can think about those other areas of expansion. But now we're going to get in to the tough part. And, and this is a real hard one to swallow. And it can happen to all of us at some point in our career is that you've been doing this a while. You're in well into your first year or beyond uh, of doing this. Remember the first year is a loss and just ramping up. But you're not getting much, if any, repeat work. That's tough because what comes next is, is you're, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> but you gotta be brutally honest with yourself and you have to become self-critical because you're doing something wrong. So if there are successful photographers in your area, you have to think about what am I doing that they're not doing and do not tell me and do not tell yourself that it's because you can't compete with price. As I mentioned before, it's not just about competing with price, it's about competing with quality and competing with service. Now, somebody just thumbed down my video for saying that, and, and if you did, well, you're not really taking a good look at this. I come from a small town in the Midwest. I know what it's like. Yes, I shoot high-end properties in Los Angeles, but I know what the real estate market is like in other parts of this country. So it's, and I'm sure in wherever you are in other countries as well, it's the same thing. You have to be able to be creative. You have to be able to then find some middle ground. For instance, if, if you have to charge so much, you have to go back, for instance, and go, wait a minute, is this really what I should be charging? Maybe you're not fast enough. Maybe you're doing too high of a quality of work. Now, it doesn't mean that, oh, you just settle on HDR. But let's say you're using the flash ambient blending technique that I teach and I talk about in my books and videos. Well, maybe you need to cut that back to only maybe five photos for the real killer stuff, and then you just do the rest of them with just single shot ambience or maybe even throw in some HDR. So you have to be creative to your market to be able to do that, but you have to be self-critical. Something is going wrong and either way, what you need to do first and foremost, no matter what it is, because it could be a number of different things. It could be one simple thing that you're doing wrong. Just one thing that you're missing is it's time to get professional help. Now that might sound like you're going to run to a psychiatrist and I guarantee you it's not. It's very simple. It's just paying for one hour of photography coaching to be able to see what's going on. Now, that's not Nathan just promoting his photography coaching offerings, which I do regularly, right? Um, but so does Rich Baum and so do other photographers um, in this industry. We do it for a reason because people ask us for it and it does 
help. So if you're doing something wrong, you might want to get that evaluated and for goodness sakes, don't just jump in some Facebook group, post your stuff out there and ask for an answer. You'll get a, just a plethora of different answers from all kinds of people and most of them won't be pro. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to say anything bad about the Facebook groups in general, but one of the reasons why I don't participate on them and have more of this geared toward on YouTube and also then on my own private social media is that uh, participating in a lot of the open groups on Facebook especially encourages a wide range of people. Some of them don't even do real estate photography but just want to be in a group. You can start finding that out for instance. There's a test example you want to see what I mean? Go ahead and post something in one of the Facebook groups. Check out all the comments that you'll get and then go and research each one of those people. You'll probably find that none of most of them don't have photographer as their title <laughs> for what they do for a living. You want someone to take a look at your work who does this every single day. Someone who's in the ditches. I provide for my family with an income, a full-time income from doing real estate photography. That's the input that you want. So not to divert too much onto the Facebook groups here, but once again, if you're really having some serious problems and you need to take a look back at what's going on, one hour. A one hour session will usually nail it and tell you exactly what's going on. So consider that to really take a look back at it. And once again, don't blame the markets. Don't blame the competition. Um, don't blame the situation. You got to put some of the blame on yourself. Now, the market could be bad. The competition you're up against could be part of it. But I guarantee you that's not 100% of the problem. If, even if that were to total 50%, then that means half of it falls back on you. And I told you, once I get into this, this would be the tough one. I'm gonna say things that you might not like to hear, but if you have, if you have reached that point in your career, I will give you this word of encouragement, don't give up. You were probably so close to just, just pushing past the precipice and being able to really escalate your work, be able to get clients, to be able to build what you're doing, but you have to find out what's going wrong and it's always good then to get someone's opinion who knows what's going on. You don't have to contact me for the coaching. Rich Baum, once again, I'm sure you've probably seen his YouTube channel, great photographer up in Sacramento, California, and there's other pros too that do offer this type of coaching. Think about that something to consider. So anyways, those are the things that when it comes to building clients, there's no panacea. It's not like, what do I do to build clients? And you're expecting a minute answer. You probably saw how long this video was and I could still go on with more about the experiences that I've had, lessons that I've learned. I've once again put a lot of this in my different books. I talk about this on my different YouTube channel, uh, YouTube videos. And by the way, if you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. I want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.